I'm revealing my favorite short-term investing strategies, ideas you can use to make a living or just make a little extra cash. In fact, I used one of these strategies to make over 20 grand in two months. We're talking the best investments for fast money today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Ho with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click on that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now we usually talk about long-term investing here on the channel. Those investments you can buy and hold forever with the confidence that they're going to help you create that financial future. But there's also something to be said for those short-term investments with the potential to make you a lot of money in a matter of months or, or even weeks. I made over 20 grand in futures contracts for oil prices in two months to May 2016 and, and regularly use these kinds of investments for big gains. So I want to walk you through the five best short-term investments I use, how to get started and how much you can expect to make. Understand though there are some big differences between short-term investments and the long-term investing we usually talk about. Short-term investments are more of a bet on investor sentiment or a certain catalyst for an investment rather than investing in those fun fundamentals. Now this makes short-term investments much more risky because it's an either-or kind of idea. Your bet on the price either works out or it doesn't in that time period. With long-term investing, you can be right even if it takes a while to work that out. Many of these short-term investments are also riskier because of the leverage you can use. That's being able to put bet thousands while only putting down a few hundred dollars. You can get 20 times your money or more on futures contracts. That means even a 5% return doubles your money, but it also means a 5% decline can wipe you out. Short-term investing also means a lot more work. Don't expect to be able to flip over to CNBC and get everything you need in five minutes. To make this work, you have to be ready to put in the time to really analyze an investment, understand why the price is where it's at and why it should be somewhere else in the next month. With all this, these kinds of investments aren't going to be for everyone. There's nothing wrong with putting your money in a solid portfolio and just enjoying those long-term returns. No stress, very little effort, and you can still reach your goals. But if you're ready for it, these short-term investing strategies can make you a ridiculous amount of money. Besides that 20 grand I made on those oil futures, I've made over 37,000 over the last three years on foreign exchange futures and regularly make over double digit returns on option strategies. Now this is gonna be an epic video on those five short term strategies including penny stocks, leveraged ETFs, futures, forex trading, and options. So you might wanna bookmark it as a reference later. I'll show you how to get started, some of the risks in each, and some of the strategies I use for my own portfolio. Our first short-term strategy here is probably the most popular, and that's investing in penny stocks. Now, penny stocks don't have a formal definition, but generally it's any stock that trades for under $5 a share and has a total value of less than $50 million for all of its shares together. Basically, we're talking about nano-cap stocks, which are about as small as you can get with publicly traded shares. Now, penny stocks can also be good long-term investments, but because they're so small, they tend to be extremely volatile. Just one headline, good or bad, can send these stocks surging or crashing, and it can take years for a longer-term trend to make it a good investment. Because of that, most investors trading in penny stocks do it for a fast return, catching one of these good headlines. Penny stocks are easy to trade because they're traded on exchanges and available on most online investing platforms. There are a few risks in penny stocks that you need to understand, though. First is that there usually is very little public information or history to go off of. Most big bank analysts aren't going to be looking at these because there's just not much demand for the shares. So even if an analyst can convince investors to buy, the commissions aren't going to be that big. Another risk is because there aren't that many investors interested in the shares, there aren't usually many shares traded on a daily basis. Now that's a problem for two reasons. First, because if you want to sell quickly, you might have to take a couple of cents hit on the share price. Uh, but also because these stocks are susceptible to pump and dump scams where someone will drive the share price up with marketing, sell their shares at a profit, then of course the shares crash when there's no one actively marketing them. There are a few places to look for penny stocks including the NASDAQ, OTC bulletin board, and then the pink sheets. Now the NASDAQ and OTC have a little stricter listing requirements like financial reporting and then regulation by the Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC. Those pink sheets are fraudsters dreams though. There's almost no regulation and very little in terms of oversight. So I'd seriously steer clear of these stocks. Stick with those listed on NASDAQ or the OTC. You also want to just ignore any penny stock you hear about in an email or a newsletter. There are some great short-term investments out there, but remember these are prime targets for scammers. An example of a great penny stock investment here is medical transcription billing or ticker MTBC on the NASDAQ. 
Now this medical tech company is almost at $5 a share now, but it was less than 75 cents in December 2016 when I bought shares. I worked as a labor economist for five years and I can tell you this medical transcription and that, that larger healthcare tech space is hot. So I started looking at this one earlier in the year. Turns out they had some patented voice interactive software that was hugely innovative and I thought the stock was a no-brainer takeover target. The shares jumped pretty quickly as the rest of the market caught on, but it took a little longer to really take off. I ended up cashing out for a little over $2.80 a share about 11 months into the trade for a 273% return. Now something that's going to apply to most of these short-term investments is the difference between technical and fundamental analysis. Now, there's a whole group of investors that only trade on the movement in the price of an investment. They measure how far the price has gone over a period or how fast and then compare that to the history for the investment. This is called technical analysis. Now I'm not going to say much about this type of investing because one, I just never used it much. I've followed some basic charting but stick mostly to fundamental analysis which is looking at those external and internal factors that really drive an investment. Another reason we won't talk about technical analysis here is that it's debatable whether it really works unless you're ready to make it a 9 to 5 job at your computer every day following those patterns. Now I know I'm going to get flamed in the comments by the thousands of wannabe tra day traders with a foolproof system, but you know, whatever. I'm working off nearly two decades of experience in equity analysis and investment management, and I've never seen a technical strategy outside of algorithmic trading that actually makes money. Instead, when you're looking at penny stocks, there are some fundamental factors you can watch to make smarter bets on that share price. For penny stocks, for any stocks, but for penny stocks especially, you really have to get familiar with that statement of cash flows. That's going to show you the cash generating power of the business and it's a purer way of looking at the company's financial position. Management can manipulate profits and earnings per share pretty easily, but it's much harder to fudge those numbers in the actual cash flow. Now most penny stocks aren't going to have much cash flow, but there are a few things to look for to make sure that the company has that cash necessary to survive until your catalyst for growth comes out. We'll use the Insignia Systems as an example here. Now shares trade for just about a buck eighty each for this developer and marketer of in-store advertising, and it's a stock that I've actually been watching for a while. First, you want to look here at the cash flow from operations. Now this is something I look for at any company, but especially those very small companies. Ideally, you want to see growth, but that the company is generating positive cash flow is a must. Here we see that Insignia Systems has booked positive cash flow for the last three quarters, which is a great sign considering the company's history. Then you're going to look at these other sections to see where the company is spending its cash and then the change in the cash at the bottom. It's okay to have a negative cash change if the company is spending heavily on investments, but it needs to have that reserve cash to fund it. Insignia doesn't have much to show in these other two sections, but we see that it's built up $8 million in balance sheet cash, which is nearly half its market capital. Looking deeper into the financials, Insignia has no long-term debt, so that $8 million in cash and positive cash flow makes it an attractive target as an acquisition or just gives it a lot of flexibility to grow. Our second short-term investing strategy is in leveraged ETFs. Now most investors are familiar with regular exchange traded funds. These are funds managed to hold an index or an investing theme by actually holding the investments in a certain percentage. So you might have the technology sector spider, the XLK, which holds shares of 67 tech companies. For the ability to buy and hold all 67 of these companies with one trade, you pay just 0.13% a year as a management expense fee. Now leveraged ETFs are special funds created to multiply the returns on a sector or a theme. Instead of holding the shares, they create that three times or the double returns with a combination of swaps and derivatives. Let's look at a table of the most actively traded leveraged ETFs as an example. You have the name and the fund symbol. Uh, leverage means how many times the fund should move versus the sector. So if stock sec stocks increased by 2%, you would expect this first fund to jump by 6%. The focus column here is the theme or sector in which the fund invests. And that position is whether the fund benefits when the sector rises or falls. So if you're in a short fund, a negative position, the price of the shares would go up if that sector fell. There are leveraged funds for all kinds of themes, including sectors like technology, energy, and healthcare, to emerging market country stocks like China and Brazil. These leveraged ETFs trade just like stocks, so you can buy or sell them on any online investing platform. There are a few important things to know though, some that might mean that these should only be used for short-term trading. First is the expense ratio on these funds tends to be about twice what you pay on other ETFs, so it's definitely not something you want to hold for the long term. 
If you want to leverage a long-term bet on a sector, it's a better idea just to go with those options, which we'll talk about later. Also, leveraged ETFs are rebalanced daily, which means the portfolio manager has to buy and sell the financial products to maintain that three to one ratio. This creates kind of a drag on the fund, so the actual return isn't exactly that three times the return on the sector. Now, what leveraged ETFs are good for is that very short-term bet or protection on a trading idea. For example, if you were heavily invested in tech stocks but afraid that the sector would drop hard in the next month, you could invest in that ultra-short SQQQ to actually make money and not have to sell out of your shares. Our next short-term investment is futures contracts on things like metals, currencies, and agricultural goods. Futures are financial contracts to buy or sell something at a set date and a set price, usually in the next month or a few months into the future. Most futures contracts are bought or sold as a way to reduce risk. For example, a farmer might sell October contracts for wheat. The contract sets a price they'll get months in advance, so they don't have to worry about that price in the meantime. On the other side of that is a food processor like General Mills might buy those contracts so it locks in the price for that wheat it needs to make your breakfast to champions. Futures can also be used for investment though. You can buy those contracts for wheat if you expect the price to go up and then just sell them before the delivery date. But here's the beauty of futures contracts. You can buy contracts worth hundreds of thousands of dollars for just a few grand. For example, each single contract for West Texas Intermediate or US crude oil is for 1,000 barrels. Now at the current price of around $70 a barrel, that would mean $70,000 per contract to buy or sell depending on what the futures price was. But you're only required to deposit about $3,500 for each contract. So you can bet on that price of 3,000 barrels for all of about 10,000 bucks. That's about a 20 to one times your money. So let's do the math here. And this is an actual trade that I made in 2016 after the price of crude had bottomed in February at around $26 a barrel. By March, it was clear that prices had gone too far and were on the rebound, so I bought two con contracts for $38 a barrel for May delivery. The current or spot price at this point was just under 36 bucks, so the market was expecting the price to go up a little bit, but not much. I put down $7,000 for those three contracts worth 114 grand, but this was actually more than I needed to deposit. I could have put down as little as 5,700 for that investment. Crude prices kept on climbing and by May had reached $45 a barrel when I sold my contracts. Remember that each contract is worth a thousand barrels. So those th three contracts were now worth 135,000 for a gain of 21 grand from the original price. And I had made three times my investment in just two months. Now that's potentially a 4,000% annualized return or 40 times your money. But like all of these short-term investments we'll talk about, there's a huge risk. If the price had gone the other way, I could have easily lost my entire investment in a heartbeat. In fact, I remember one trade in 2012. I was trading gasoline futures and there was an explosion at a Canadian refinery overnight. The price of gasoline spiked like 4% and since I was shorting the contract, betting the price would go down, I lost over $10,000 on the investment. So there are five types of assets that trade with futures contracts. You can buy or sell energies like oil, gasoline, heating oil, natural gas, and ethanol. Uh, there are contracts for currencies with the dollar, euro, British pound, yen, and Mexican peso all heavily traded. You can also buy or sell contracts on the direction of the stock market. Finally, there's contracts on metals including gold, silver, aluminum, and copper, and also almost any agricultural commodity is going to have a contract. So corn, wheat, soybeans, rice, gall, uh, cattle, hogs, you name it. Most online investing platforms will allow you to open a futures contract with a broker. There's a lot more that goes into futures trading, determining where you think the price is going to go and setting up your investments. I'll do a video exclusively on futures because it's really an amazing investment. A few tips here though. First, always understand the downside and catalyst for the trade to go the wrong way. You also want to set stop orders so if the price goes against you, you don't lose too much money. It's also a good idea to trade in a few different types of investments so that if one trade is losing money, then maybe a few others are going to support your profits. One thing that's going to be important for futures and forex trading, which we'll talk about next, is to focus on one specific asset in the market. You can't expect to be successful if you're trying to trade every contract available, if you've got bets on metals and currency and on ag products. To really make money in these investments and see the turning points in the price, you have to become an expert in that asset. That means understanding the current political environment and key supplier countries for those metals, uh, understanding how potential interest rate changes are going to affect the asset. For each asset, there are a list of factors to watch for and understand so you can make a smart bet on the price. Now, this next short-term investment idea that currency trading is a part of that futures idea, but I really like this one, so I wanted to give it its own section. 
Most investors don't know it, but the foreign exchange market or the Forex market is actually the largest in the world with over 5 trillion traded every day. That's versus less than a fifth of that in stocks. Forex offers some of the highest leverage also with 50 to 1 bets and even higher for day trading. Now currencies are always traded in pairs, usually the value of the currency versus the dollar. There are dozens of currency pairs available, but like all of the short term strategies, it helps to focus on a few to limit the amount of research you need to keep up with. Through buying or selling these pairs, you're betting that the value of one currency is going to be higher or lower versus another. And what I like about Forex is that the biggest factors that affect these currencies are those big economic forces like growth, interest rate, and capital flows. Since these are all regularly reported, you can trade Forex exclusively around the releases of these reports. That's something you can't necessarily do with a lot of other futures contracts. When I was trading energy futures, I was constantly trying to keep up with all the kinds of supply and demand headlines. Futures trade 23 hours a day, so you can be waking up at 2 a.m. worried about your trades, and it's a constant stress. So being able to just put on a futures position ahead of an economic release and then take your profits afterwards is a good way to limit that round the clock stress and that amount of research that you need to do. Our next short term investment is through options trading. Now options are contracts to buy or sell stocks, but with a very important difference from futures. Buying an option gives you the right to buy or sell a stock, but not the obligation. So there are two types of options. A call option gives you the right to buy shares, while a put option gives you the right to sell shares. When you buy or sell an option, you'll see an expiration date, which is always the third Friday of the month. You'll also see a strike price, which is the price of the shares for that option, and you'll see the price of the option, the premium. Now let's look at an example to make it easier. We see here that shares of Apple are currently trading just under $204 a share, and this is in mid-November. Now I'm looking at the January 2019 options, so this investment will expire on January 18th in a couple of months. So I can buy call options at $200 a share, which means I get the right to buy Apple for $200 a share in January, and that's the strike price. Now for the right to do this, I have to pay $12 a share. That's called the premium on the option. So if I pay $12 for the right to buy Apple at $200 in January, and the price of the shares goes to $240 by that time, what does that mean for me? That option would now be worth at least $40 because if it was less than that $40, someone could just buy the option and then sell the shares immediately for a riskless profit. But instead of buying the shares, I could just sell the call option for $40 and a return of 233% on my money. Each option contract is worth 100 shares, so one contract would have cost me $1,200 and I could sell it for $4,000 or a profit of $2,800 for each contract I bought. Remember, options come in two types, calls and puts. So if I thought Apple shares might fall by that time, then I could buy a put option, which would give me the right to sell the shares at a certain price. Going back to our example, I could get the right to sell shares at $200 for $7.59 per share. If the price goes down to under $192.41 by January, so that's that 200 strike price minus what I paid for the right to sell the shares, then I'd make money on the bet. Options can also be used for protection, and this is primarily how I use them. So if I own shares of a company and I'm worried about the price going down over the next few months, I can buy a put option for the right to sell my shares at a certain price. I've effectively locked in that price as the lowest I'll get on the stock, even if the market price falls further. The important thing here to remember is that buying an option gives you the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a stock. So if I buy those call options on Apple and the share price isn't above $200 by January, I sure as hell ain't going to buy it for $200 each. I would just let that options expire worthless but then I would lose that $12 per share I invested. Similarly, if I bought put options on a stock I own and the price of the shares didn't fall, I'd just hold on to the stock. Uh, the price I paid for the put options would be gone but they did their job protecting me from any short-term weakness. Now the payoff on that, those Apple options wasn't huge because the strike price was very close to the actual price, so we weren't betting on any big moves in the shares. Let's look at an, another example to see how options can make you rich. Here we have January options for shares of McDonald's. Now I've picked McDonald's because it's a stock that doesn't normally see big changes in the share price. That's important for options trading because it's, it's going to be built into the price you pay for each contract. If the shares jump around a lot, it's going to cost more for the right to buy or sell those shares because there's a higher chance the shares will be much higher or much lower by expiration. But say we're expecting shares of McDonald's to absolutely tank by January from trading at about 182 per share right now. Maybe we have a lawyer connection that says Ronald McDonald is being sued for alimony or, or John Amos has just opened a McDowell's down the street from every restaurant. Either way, the happy meal ain't so happy. 
So we can buy a put option to sell the shares for 145 each and pay just 36 cents or $36 for each contract since an options contract is worth 100 shares. Now if shares of McDonald's plunge 35% by January to 118, then our put option is worth at least $27 each because we have the right to sell those shares for $145. That 36 we put down for each option contract is now worth $2,700 or a 7,400% return. To trade options, you only have to be approved in your online investing account. That usually requires a minimum of a few thousand dollars in the account, but that's about it. Now, like I said, I generally use options to protect my investments or to make a little extra money from them, but you can make a lot of money very fast. There's some different option strategies you can use, but the idea is just that you need a strong reason to believe the price is going to rise or fall quickly. Now, you have millions of other investors looking at each stock and all their expectations for that stock price are built into the options pricing. So that average market expectation has to be wrong for some reason. Now, in our example above, finding out from your lawyer friend about Ronald's legal troubles would be insider trading and you'd go to jail. But there are a lot of other ways to find out why you think a stock would be much higher or lower. Again, I would suggest you have options bets in several stocks to diversify your risks. Stop loss orders can also work here to limit your losses and, and don't feel like you have to make an options bet on every stock you think should be higher or lower. Be selective where you place your money. Each of these short-term investments could be entire series of videos. I'll be putting together videos for options trading and futures soon, so subscribe to the channel and watch for those. I'd also love to hear from you in the community. What are your favorite quick investments and, and how do you trade them? So scroll down and tell us in the comments below. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the best videos on beating debt, making more money, and making your money work for you. If you've got a question about money, just subscribe to the channel, scroll down, and ask it in the comments, and we'll make sure to answer it in a future video.